There is a return for Manny Onorise to the starting 11 and Kweku Aduro, who we haven't seen since his debut on loan from Derby County, was uh, was brought off at half time. Well, he gets his chance to make an impact here this evening. Uh, they replacing both Callum Cook, who drops to the bench, and Alex Lacey, who has picked up a hamstring injury. So Pools with Pete Jamieson in goal, to, made two big saves against Eastleigh on Saturday. In front of him is a back three of Luke Waterfall, Tom Parks, and Onorise. Aduro and Ferguson as the wing backs. Crawford, captain Nicky Featherston, and Terrell Adjumang on loan from Borough in central midfield with Joe Gray playing alongside Manny Dizarue. On the bench for Pools, Joel Dixon, Louis Stevenson, Callum Cook, Shea Cooper and Courtney Duffus. As for Robbie Elliott in charge of Gateshead, well, they have made three changes coming into this one. Louis Storey, Kane Adom and Regan Booty replacing Mamadou Job, Ben Warman and Marcus Denanga, the club's top goal scorer with 25 for the campaign. A former Pooley in his own right, but just one in his last five. Sees him take a seat on the bench. Some honourable mentions for former Pooleys in the Heed lineup. Kenton Richardson starting in midfield as well. Pools underway, kicking from left to right in this first half. Craig Hignett alongside me, former Hartlepool United player and manager. And Craig Pools need that three points to just point them in the right direction. Yeah, and that being to, towards safety. Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it, just to be able to chill for the yeah. <laughs> remaining games of the season without having anything on it, knowing that you're safe. But they've got to know that they're safe, Rob. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, they started this game quite sharp, actually. Yes, Pools in the away kit. The uh, teal and navy stripes with the white shorts and the white socks. Gateshead in the white shirts with the black sleeves, the black shorts and the black socks. And it's pulls in possession with Crawford. All the way back now to Tom Parks, one of three centre-backs. Kevin Phillips changing the formation. It was a 4-2-3-1 at Eastleigh. He's gone for a back five here this evening. As Pools trying to make inroads down that left-hand side. And a chance for Pools to attack. Joe Gray breaking inside the penalty area. At the angle, he needs some help. Just overrun it. And it's out for a goal kick. And the cheers that you can hear are from the Gateshead fans down in front of us at the back of this main stand here this evening. But as you said, Craig, a bright start from Pools. Yeah, really bright. Look sharp, moving the ball quick. Joe Gray got in on the left-hand side. He was 1v1. I thought he was going to just shuffle one way, cut inside on his right foot, but he didn't. He tried to go on the outside, but just took a heavy touch. Adu Rogers sliding in to dispossess his man. The ball out for a throw-in in front of the Pools dugout, which is just on the edge of the athletics track. It is a strange setup here, isn't it? I think it has to, has to be said. It is a huge stadium. And Gateshead on average around seven, eight hundred fans per home game. It's Gateshead in possession down the left hand side, and they win a throw in once again off the boots of Quaco Duro. So a chance for Gateshead to ask the first questions of the pool's defence. Robbie Tinkler to take this throw in, and he's gone right onto up to the athletics track to. Uh, Launch this one deep into the penalty area. Everybody drop back. In it goes towards the edge of the six-yard box. Bounces through and pulls able to clear. Ajaman will look to run it away from the pool's box. He stops dead. Turns back and lays it off to Parks, who then finds the chest of Joe Gray. He has runners to his left. One being David Ferguson, who is accelerating. Gray midway inside the opposition half. Finds Ferguson now wide left-hand side. Skips infield. Might be able to pick out Dizarue, who does well to use his strength to get his shot away. And it's palmed down and into the area as Gateshead look to clear. And they do. But a first sight of goal for Manny Dizarue. And that link-up we were talking about before the game. David Ferguson in towards Pool's top scorer. Yeah. Great little turn, wasn't it, by Manny on the edge of the box. Just made enough room for himself with his right foot. Just trying to bend it in that far corner to the keeper's left. But the keeper, it was a good height for the keeper, really. It would have been disappointing if the keeper let that one in. But good sight to goal for Manny. Well, Manny Desirue hasn't scored from outside the box yet this season. So that very much would have been a collector's item. But certainly uh, used his strength well, didn't he? I was going to say collector's item. Well, how long did you say it's been since Bulls last won at Gateshead? <laughs> uh, 70 years. 
I have to uh, I have to sort of give that context. There's been eight meetings in the last 70 years, so not an awful lot of meetings, not an awful lot of visits here. As a searching ball forward that Pete Jamieson comes a long way out to try and meet. Instead, Parks takes it away from him, the clearance up to the halfway line. Yes, 1954, the last time Pools won here. Eight visits since then, Pools have always come out on the wrong side of it. So looking to uh, get rid of a, a particular hoodoo this evening. There's Gateshead in possession, out to this near side with Tinkler, looks down the line for some willing runners and finds one in Kane Adon, but he is dispossessed by Luke Waterfall, who is a mountain of a man at the back there and clears the lines, but he clears it straight to a Gateshead sure. Now Adon finds Brown, and the move sweeps out to the right-hand side via Callum Whelan, former Manchester United Academy graduate. Actually played under John Askey at Port Vale, did Callum Whelan. Gateshead just beyond the halfway line. Back it goes to Tinkler once more. Inside the centre circle, the bright orange boots on. Looks to pick his pass, but he's closed down by Nicky Featherston and pulls latch onto the loose ball. Desiree trying to hold off two black and white shirts, but now a chance for Gateshead to break at pace. Brown inside the area at the angle, looks to cut it back and is blocked by Luke Waterfall, who's there making sure that he protects his goal at all costs. And the first corner of the game goes the way of Gateshead. Yeah, well, he done well. Didn't he? Luke Waterfall just getting across there to his left hand side. It was a quick break by Gateshead, just robbed Manny Desiree halfway in his own half and broke forward. And it was Dijon Brown, the lead striker this evening, six in his last six, 18 years of age on loan from Derby County. Corner to the heed. It's going to be an in swinger, left footed, right on top of Pete Jamieson and in his six yard box, but headed away by Parks and out for a throw in on the near side this time so you would think that this is going to be a rinse and repeat of yeah. what we saw last time the long arching throw into the penalty area and that is exactly what we've got Regan Booty to launch this one in the curved run up to the touchline right to the front post Brown gets a header on it but it's away from goal picked up now by Hannant out to this near side to Whelan once more with the shoulder length slick back black hair now Kenton Richardson former Hartlepool United man to Robbie Tinkler Gateshead enjoying a spell of possession as you would expect with a team fighting for promotion full of confidence and happy to have possession and Pools at present Craig happy for Gateshead to have it yeah they're just sitting in a shape aren't they you can see Pools shape there we have got that back five. That's a really good ball out wide, isn't it? That? Yeah, hit oh. diagonally into the area now. Whelan looking to turn and find some space. He does back out wide. Hammered into the penalty area and Poole's able to clear. But back in it comes, only to the feet of Parks, who clears up towards Desiree. Gets a shove in the back and is dispossessed. Whelan out to the right-hand side once more. Look for a little floated low ball into the area. Rebounds almost. And once again, Poole's are able to scramble it away. And might look for the run of Joe Gray. It's over the top from Featherston. And Gray is in. 1v1. It's a heavy first touch. He needs to set himself. And he does. He sits it down. He squares it to Desiree Way. He can't sort his feet out. It's back to Joe Gray once more. Onto his left foot. Squares it and buries it. Joe Gray reaches the landmark. 10 for the season. Two in his last two. And Hartlepool United made that look extremely difficult but they managed to find the back of the net in the end. You thought that the chance was gone, but Desiree went back into Gray, found the angle and slipped it past Nathan Harness in the opposition goal. That is just the start that Kevin Phillips would have wanted eight minutes in. Gateshead nil, pulls one. Well, I'm not sure how Joe Gray managed to, to sneak it in. I think the keeper's had a bit of a nightmare for that one. He's, he came out initially when the ball was squared to Manny Desiree, where he couldn't get his shot away. Ball ended up back with Joe Gray. Keeper went rushing out. He just stepped it to his left-hand side. There was a big gap there at the angle, and he managed to find it. It was a really good finish from Joe Gray. Take nothing away from him. I think the keeper's had a bit of a rush of blood. Great start for Pools. You thought the chance was gone. Yeah, I mean, he was in, wasn't he? And yeah. It took a little bit of a heavy touch, and you thought that was it. Keeper came out, smothered it, and then when he squared it, and, and Manny didn't get a shot away, you're thinking the chance has gone and then once he's got it at an angle 
you're thinking, well, there's no way he can possibly score from there, but the keeper just come rushing out, left a, a big, massive gap at his near post, and Joe found it. Joe Gray, a man who will have confidence flowing through him at present as Gateshead are on the attack, but Pools have a man down. And I think it's Manny Dizarouwe over on the far side. In fact, no, it's not. It, yeah, is it? Yeah, Terrell Adjumang perhaps. And the referee signalling for a head injury, which is why he brought an abrupt end to the, the play. But Adjumang back on his feet now. And just uh, nursing a bit of a, a sore head. But it is going to be a, an uncontested drop ball. What's Craig Hignett's thoughts on uncontested drop balls? Well, I, I'm not. I don't mind with them ones because Kate said we're in complete possession and it, it wasn't their fault. Shot from distance that just goes wide of the left-hand pause to Pete Jamieson as Gateshead tried to rally themselves and Callum Whelan just getting his first sight of goal and readjust his hairband as he trots back into position. And that wasn't a million miles away Rob, it was a good strike with his no. left foot, so I think Jameson was struggling a little bit, wasn't sure whether it was going to creep in his near post. Thankfully yeah. it didn't. He's a man who will know about confidence. We were just talking about Joe Gray, but from a, a Gateshead perspective, Whelan two in his last two. Oh, loose header back towards the goalkeeper for Gateshead, and David Ferguson almost found him himself in on goal there, but Nathan Harness, the opposition goalkeeper, has taken a, a whack in the gut, or maybe maybe a little bit lower than that, but... I don't know, he hasn't moved, has he? He certainly, uh, he certainly looks in some distress the uh, the opposition keeper who is going to pull himself up to his feet and able to uh, carry on so Gateshead nil Hartlepool United won 10 minutes in on BBC Radio T Sport we're on 95 FM DAB Digital Radio Freeview 722 and online via BBC Sounds if you want to listen to us take us with you wherever you're going tonight it is a good start from Kevin Phillips' side. Joe Gray making the difference after eight minutes when you thought the chance was gone. Managed to find the angle. And as Craig Hignett mentioned, perhaps question marks to be asked over Nathan Harness of his positioning. Because he just left that near post open, yeah. didn't he, to, to, for Gray to slot in. He did. He just come chasing out, didn't he? He had no idea where his, his goal was or where his near post was. Oh, Whelan in towards Brown inside the area. On oh, Adjumang back doing his defensive duties and does really well to disrupt the move when it looked like Gateshead were setting themselves for a shot on target. But still they come forward with the heed. Pools can see the free kick. Manny Desirouwe has brought his man down 20 yards out. Well, the first attack was dangerous, wasn't it? The ball found its way in the box. To Brown, I thought he was going to wriggle and get a shot away, but they managed to defend it well, Pools. And then when the ball came to the edge of the box, Manny does a rearway just... I don't know whether it was a shove or whether it was a trip, but it was a definite foul. Well, this is danger now. I think it's too close, Rob, for it. Do you think? Yeah, I mean, famous last words, isn't it? <laughs> I don't say that now. He's took a big mad run-up to it. <coughs> well, so to get it up and over with a run up like that free kick for Gateshead over the wall and it's palmed down and then headed in but the offside flag is up Callum Whelan celebrating as are the fans down in front of us but they don't see that the offside flag is up it is and Pools live to fight another day while the Gateshead fans in front of us will uh <laughs> Devastated that their well, celebrations are cut short. It was a great free kick, wasn't it? Because it, I don't know whether he, he got a, foot, a hand on it, Jameson, and, and just pushed it onto the crossbar, but when it come back out... It was hammered in by Callum Whelan. It was ahead, I think, by Whelan, yeah. wasn't it? He headed yeah. it back in, but he, he was obviously... He went too early. He went before the kick was taken and was in an offside position. Dejan but Brown. they look dangerous, don't they, Gateshead, when they, they do. go forward? They, they look like... The way they move the ball... And they look like the fact they can find little avenues in which to cut pools open with Dijon Brown in between both Luke Waterfall and Parks. And he's a willing runner. So Gateshead in possession. Midway inside their own half. 
Robbie Tinkler up towards the halfway line looking for one of those passes now as Ferguson clatters into Brown but no free kick given and Poole's able to clear loose ball infield picked up by Crawford now Ferguson down the line he goes to Dizarue who is chopped down but it was a good challenge by Louis Storey and Gateshead all the way back to goalkeeper Nathan Harness I wish I didn't have so many gummy bears before we uh, do you know what they've killed my throat <laughs> <coughs> I just want to cough all the time well, I can turn your mic off if you want to have a good cough there you go you I'm sure okay. you yeah, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an insight to life behind the microphone ladies and gentlemen Craig Hignett is a feeder is what I found out today well, have you had mint toffees gummy bears and strawberry laces red licorice red and licorice sorry licorice. sorry how dare I insult you strawberry laces are little thin things aren't they <laughs> I need something more substantial than that. I need a bit of a filling to my licorice. <laughs> well, there you go. You've learned something new about Craig Hignett this evening, everyone, as a crossfield ball finds Gateshead inside the area. But, again, good defensive cover from Pools at the back. Well, it was Nicky Featherston, yeah. I think, wasn't it? He'll come back. Got an important header. It I was, was waiting for the offside flag to go up. Same. Yeah. It was Regan Booty who just lifted that ball into the area. Callum Whelan's made so many runs. He's made so many runs in behind the back four of Hartlepool already. He's still only 25, Callum Whelan. It feels like he's been around forever. Mm. Started at Watford. Plenty of loans. I mentioned one of them being out to Port Vale. Came through the Manchester United Academy as well. Certainly not lacking in any, any quality. Long ball over the top. Chance for Gateshead to get in behind with Adom, who looks a twist and turn towards the byline low into the area Featherston is there to pick up that ball and clear up to the halfway line looking for Joe Gray who already has a goal to his name this evening and has reached that landmark of 10 goals for the season as Pools lead by a goal to nil and Joe Gray doing the, the hard work there and putting his body between man and ball and winning the free kick and just a word on Joe Gray Craig because reaching that landmark of 10 goals is is something he would have secretly been being aiming for as, yeah. as, as a forward player I think that's that's your target you know every season you want to get into double figures so the sooner you can get there the better and Joe was a young player you know the first time he's done it so it's a, a good little landmark for him still only 20 Joe Gray I say this every time, but again, we're saying about Callum Whelan there. I mean, it feels like Joe Gray's been around forever as well. Started at Pools when he was 16. Featherston with the free kick. Finds Joe Gray, who oh, just the ball skips up away from him. He tried to pluck it out of the air, but instead it was cleared behind by Kenton Richardson for Pools' first corner of the evening. So one apiece in the corner stakes, but it is Pools who lead by a goal to nil. And now, look to double it from this corner, potentially. Nicky Featherston places the ball down on the corner quadrant. Craig Hignett's got a very unique view of this corner. More on that shortly. Floated to the back post by Featherston. A free header from Waterfall. It rebounds and just escapes the head of Tom Parks. Cleared towards a do row. Now Adjumang, wide right-hand side. Being watched closely, but finds a pass in field to Crawford. Unleashes the run of Joe Gray. Low into the area. It's blocked and behind once again for another pool's corner two in quick succession well it was a dangerous corner wasn't it first one just went to the back post totally free at the back was it waterfall who yeah. managed to get ahead there keepers made a another half decent save and featherston has the chance just do the same again yeah rinse and repeat for nicky featherston from the set piece who just has to reset the ball i mean there's all kinds of stuff going on in the box with manny does a reway in comes the corner, it's an outswinger towards Onorese, Dizarue there as well, but the header goes over the crossbar quite comfortably and out for a goal kick and it remains Gateshead nil, Hartlepool United 1 with, as I crane my neck to look at the scoreboard down at, on the racetrack, it is uh, 19 minutes elapsed. Yeah, I mean Kevin Phillips will be really happy with what he's seen I think from his side, the, the other bonus for them is I think whenever they get a set piece, corner free kick, and it goes in the box, they look like they're going to be the ones who get their head to it first. They, they look much more aggressive, and they look a bigger side, I think, than Gateshead do, especially at the back there. Yeah, it's a good point, a really good point. As Regan Booty finds Robbie Tinkler inside the centre circle now to Callum Whelan, who really is 
pulling the strings and making runs and causing problems for Pools defensively. Ed Francis back to Tinkler once more, squared just beyond the halfway line to Kenton Richardson. Now Booty gets it back towards the 18-yard line. Massive bodies back for Pools defending. It rebounds up wildly into the air. Brown tries to get ahead on it, but Adjaman can clear. Flicked on by Joe Gray towards Desiree Way, but doesn't quite reach the pool striker. Gateshead still with a man down inside the penalty area. I think it's Regan Booty who looks to have done himself a mischief. But you can see, despite being a goal down, Gateshead, you can see why they are where they are in the table. As Francis looks to find a way out to the left-hand side and does with Booty. Now Whelan, space opens up for him to have a shot. That avenue is quickly closed down by Crawford. Out to the right-hand side and Gateshead, a building. Floated, lifted ball in the penalty area, headed up but not out by Onorise. A shot rebounds through a crowd of bodies and is caught by Pete Jamieson. It was a tricky one for Jamieson because plenty of bodies in front of him. Wasn't quite sure how the ball was going to deflect or spin up, but it fell, thankfully, into his gloves. Yeah, it was Kane Adam, wasn't it? A little turn in the box, got a decent strike on it. Manny on a race, they managed to get something on it. Took all the pace of the ball. And then just fell nice for Jameson. Desiree Way chasing high up the pitch, but Gateshead able to clear. Wheeler, nice one, two, and then Pools and David Ferguson, judged to have conceded a free kick, taken quickly. And Richardson brings it up to the halfway line with the white boots on his feet out to this near side for Adam. Tangling with Kweku Aduro. And Pools get the free kick. He's had a quiet a quiet start, hasn't he, Kweku Aduro? Yeah, I mean, he's mostly been defensive, hasn't it? He? He's been trying to get in and, and get his shape, fill in on that right-hand side. And Gateshead are trying to overload. He hasn't really had anything to to feed off going forward 20 minutes in what have you made of it what have you made of the start from what you've seen well, it's been a while since you've seen Pools well, so Pools what? started really well you know I thought they were sharp but you can see why Gateshead are in the playoffs you know they move the ball really quick they've, they've got good footballers intricate play they look dangerous when they go forward I think it's listen this game's far from over yeah but I've seen enough at Pools to know that they're, they're going to be in this game because of the set pieces and also as we saw with that goal one ball over the top because when they do commit bodies yeah. forward gate said they do get really high up the pitch which could leave them exposed with a ball over the top which led to Joe Gray's opener earlier on they'll definitely get chances pulled Whelan picks up possession midway inside the opposition half drifting in field looks for the run of Brown and finds him on the 18 yard line out to the right hand side a chance for Gateshead once more perhaps to put it into the box instead they go short to Ed Francis shapes to shoot and does oh good save down to the right hand side by Pete Jamieson has to palm that behind low for another corner but did well there well, he did really well Francis was some distance out but it was a good strike left foot low down to Jameson's right he got down really quickly got a good strong hand on it pushed it behind for a corner and Gates had just starting to ask more and more questions of Pools defensively corner incoming for Gateshead right to the front post headed away and Pools look to con complete the clearance up high Quaker Aduro is going to chase it as it trickles to the feet of Nathan Harness in the Gateshead goal right down in front of us we are over to one side of the pitch so we've got a really good view of Joe Gray's opener it was great in possession for Pools. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> You've got a more uh, acute view, shall we say. Ed Francis. And Gateshead pick up possession. Claims of a handball that weren't given. Regan Booty on the touchline. Infield now to Tinkler once more, who is always that deepest lying midfielder, just to keep things ticking well, over. Tinkler's playing as, as the middle one in the, the cross back three. Oh, big cross at the penalty area, that yeah. is wild and out for a goal kick. Yeah, he's playing as the central one in the back three, Tinkler. 
I can randomly on our effects mic hear the Gateshead fans in front of us discussing Kit Corby May news. Yeah. Fantastic play, he is, by the way. <laughs> yes. I mean, I was at that the Man U Liverpool you FA were. Cup game, which was amazing. Not the right result for me, but <laughs> I thought Corby May knew in that was absolutely outstanding. Yeah. He deserved so, his England call up, to be yeah. fair. For an 18 year old, it is incredible uh, what he can do. Chip ball forward that takes a nick off a of pool's player and all the way through once again to the Gateshead keeper who balls it out underarm. First real lull in the game that we've had. It's come just on the 25 minute mark with Pools leading Gateshead by a goal to nil. Big travelling number of Poolies over on the far side. Seems to be even more who've filtered in since we, uh, we last spoke about them. Speaking of England, by the way, in the, uh, the friendly, England won, Belgium won, Ivan Tony with the goal. This is between him and Ollie Watkins, who is potentially the other striker, mm. isn't it? Gateshead on the attack, down the left-hand side, low cross into the penalty area, it comes all the way through, David Ferguson controls it on his chest, the cross coming in from Adom and Ferguson able to boom it clear into the Gateshead half of play. But once again, Pools... Well, they need to be brave, Pools. Yeah. When they when they get the ball in possession like that, they need to be brave and, and try and find passes instead of just hoofing it up the pitch to come back again. Adom inside the area, at the angle, looks to try and cut it back, but it takes a deflection. Gateshead corner. And the more Pools sit back, the more confidence Gateshead gets. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they're getting through Pools fairly regularly. You know, getting down the sides of them as well, left and right side. Still got 20 minutes to go till half time. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a long time to hold out, isn't it? Corner incoming from Gateshead. Right to the back post. There is a free header. Comes all the way through back to the front post. Rebounds inside the area. Hooked away by Crawford, but only towards the byline. Joe Gray runs it to the corner flag and then is able to clear into touch just to try and relieve a bit of pressure. Throwing quickly taken. Ed Francis finds Tinkler, looks to feed a ball through to Brown, who receives it and goes down inside the area, and that is a clear penalty to Gateshead. Dijon Brown received it, turned, and as he did so, his legs were taken from underneath him. A clear penalty, and a chance for the home side to level the scoring. Yeah, I'm not sure whether Brown meant to do what he did, but he, he took the ball and then just sort of pirouetted didn't he on it and flicked it away I, I'm not sure he'd have got it I think he'd, he'd pushed it too far in front of him but by that time that little bit of skill had, had forced I think it was Mane on Irise wasn't it to to make the tackle and bring him down well, definite pen it's Luke Hannant to level the scoring for Gateshead Hannant against Jameson right footed oh and Jameson goes the right way but can't get anything on it. And Gateshead equalise. And for the second game in a row, Pools are pegged back by a penalty. Gateshead won, Hartlepool United won. Yeah, well, I think against this league, Kevin Phillips, quite rightly, was upset with the award of the penalty. But I don't think he can have any complaints with that one. And it was dispatched really well, actually. Low to Jameson's left. He went the right way. There was too much power on it. And Gateshead really have been threatening, you know, you have to say, Rob, haven't you? They've, after the start and going behind, the response has been really good from them. They've pen, pegged Hartlepool back and they've penned them back as well with some really good play, quick passing. And it could be a long evening for Hartlepool. They need to, to be better with the ball. And you braver, know? like you said earlier. Yeah, well, they do. They need to find some passes and, and get, some, get some possession of the ball instead of just keep clearing the danger and, and letting it come back. Well, it's easier said than done. Pulls in possession. Looking at Robert Elliott down on the touchline. I mean, he's absolutely is that living, Magna, is that? living and breathing every mm. single ball. I think, yeah, it is Carl Magna, yeah, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. Pulls level at one all then. And it is Gateshead in possession. Adom goes back 
to Kenton Richardson. So twice Pete Jamieson has gone the right way. He did the same at Eastleigh. Guessed the right direction, just couldn't get enough on it. I thought for a second that he might have kept it out, but it just squirmed past the only the only space there was to put it. Hannon put it there. Yeah, he did. And good direction on it. Good pace as well, wasn't it? I wasn't sure with the run-up because it was a very slow run-up. I think he was waiting for Jameson to go one way or the other. Throwing for Gateshead. Just parallel with the Pulse penalty area. It's going to be Booty to launch this one into the area, and he does so. Up towards the edge of the six-yard box, bounces down. Pulse desperately tried to clear. Shot through a crowd of bodies once more, and it flashes wide. With the near post to Pete Jameson, it remains. Gateshead one, Hartlepool United one. Well, that was a chance, you know, Rob. The ball was bobbling about from that long throw-in. I think it fell to Adam again and he just slashed at it with his left foot and it may well have hit the outside of the post and went wide well if you're Hartlepool United now Craig what do you do you've been sat in that that well, dugout you know what this this type of game it, feels yeah, like I mean you, you need half time to come quick <laughs> to be fair but you're, you're having a little thing to see if there's a way you can disrupt the flow of the game because if the flow of the game carries on the same way then there's only one winner for me Rob so they need to do something different Hartlepool and whether that's being a little bit braver keep the shape but just be a little bit braver with the ball try and get a little bit more possession slow the game down a little bit just take the sting out of it because at the moment there's no respite for them and forward come Gateshead once more down the right hand side a through ball into the area and at the angle a sliding challenge from Luke Waterfall who forces it behind for another corner but once again it was Kieran Evans breaking the lines inside the box and Waterfall doing what he does which is protecting his goal at all costs another I'll tell you corner what, what else they need to get a grip of is, is the midfield runners yeah. because there's been so many midfield runners we mentioned Whelan before but Evans there one midfield run and he gets played in corner to the home side from the far side in it comes to the near post Pools are able to scramble it away they might have some willing runners here out on the left hand side Joe Gray just too much on that but he makes something of it does really well he's got bodies infield if he so chooses picks out a do row just overruns it Gateshead playing about with it at the back and that might invite some Pools pressure up the pitch and it does as Gateshead look to try and play their way through that press Joe Gray see that's that's has, brave you know, yeah. that's what I'm talking about pools to do you know when they win the ball Gates said there they try to play their way out and, and sometimes it can be a little bit dicey but that was in the right area because it's nowhere near the goal it's out on that far touch line and they try to play their way out won a foul and they've got possession again whereas pools have just been clearing the ball Gates said have been picking it up and then it's almost attack free defence Rob Tinkler now to the right hand side as Gateshead again tried to unpick that Pools defence with the ball into the feet of Brown, Francis, Whelan, rebounds for Ferguson and Pools able to clear up towards Crawford who meets it but nobody up the top end of the pitch really to able to capitalise onto that so Gateshead will start again it's like a training ground yeah, routine isn't it, is. it? it's like a training ground um, well, they keep the pitch nice and wide don't they yeah. they've got wingers on both sides who are hugging the touchline make it really difficult for for Pools to, to cover the full area and that's important isn't it because that's what's opening up the, yeah, the spaces Pools in the middle of the pitch if, if Pools are trying to play nice and narrow so that they don't play through the middle Whelan. then they've always got that out ball oh, Whelan into the penalty area good cross that escapes the Pools defence it comes all the way through to the other side and now Regan Booty tries to find a pass through but on a reset stands tall and runs it out of defence needs a bit of help though because he's running into two mm. white and black shirts but David Ferguson is there to provide the backup he needs and now Jameson dressed all in green away to our left hand side has possession with Kevin Don't Phillips the pools head coach pointing the way forward for his side Dizarue holds the ball up oh, and he's given it away to Whelan now Francis back out to Whelan drifting to the right hand side just beyond the penalty area towards the corner flag back it goes to Hannant infield once more and Francis as Pools rush to get bodies back a sliding challenge from Ferguson it might make its way to the byline and it does the cross though blocked by the former Pools captain and out for a throw in to Gateshead 
mean, he's done well there, Ferguson, to yeah. stop the ball coming into the box because Keita had an overload down that right hand side. They had men in the box. I don't it was know. important he stopped across and he did. Well, I don't know about you, Craig, but these last 10 minutes have dragged, haven't mm. they, from a pool's perspective? Yeah. Well, when the first, the first, what, the first 15 minutes flew by, mm. and then ever since the penalty, or just before the penalty, well, it's uh, it's been a difficult watch from a pool's perspective because Gateshead have just absolutely penned pools in. Throwing comes deep into the penalty area. The referee blows for a, is that a free kick. Now, I know it's early, Rob, but when you're under pressure like this, you take your time with everything. You know, get yourself to half time, have a little bit of a reshuffle or have a little bit of a team talk. Decide what you're going to do, what you're going to change, how you're going to play second half. Take your time with all of this now, though. And I think that's what Jameson is doing with, yeah. this, with this free kick, isn't he? He's reset the ball a couple of times, just checks his studs and then launches it long, deep into the gateshead half of play. Desiree does well to make something of that. Ferguson, left-hand side, Adjumang. Look how quickly he's closed down, though, by white gateshead shirts. Lifted ball forward from Parks, looking for the run of Joe Gray. Might get a second bite at it, the Pools goal scorer, as Gateshead are able to clear. Now, Luke Waterfall is in a foot race with Brown, and Jameson is there as the outlet and the safety net that he needs. And Jameson able to clear. Now, Aduro picks up possession right down in front of Kevin Phillips, the Pools head coach. Nice little turn from Crawford, but he's budged off the ball. And it was Kenton Richardson who just dismissed Crawford. Now Robbie Tinkler in the base of the centre circle. Ten minutes to go till half-time. Matty Nixon will bring you a full roundup of all the scores at the break from England and their game against Belgium. As, as Belgium have just taken the lead against England in that one. Yuri Tielemans, the Aston Villa midfielder, as a shot through a crowd of bodies from Gateshead is easily saved by Jameson. Down low into the turf, just collapses on top of the ball for safekeeping so England 1 Belgium 2 the latest in the international friendly there at Wembley and here in the National League Gateshead 1 Hartlepool United 1 Pools with the early goal on the 8th minute long ball over the top from Nicky Featherston found Joe Gray who was in one on one against the goalkeeper stopped the ball dead cut back picked out Manny Desiru where it was it was it just it was inches away from a move that would collapse, but instead Desiree back into Joe Gray, who was at the angle. The opposition keeper had committed, and it was an, a comfortable, slotted home finish from Gray to give Pools the advantage. But from that point, it's been all Gateshead. And various shots on target that Jameson has had to, had to protect his goal. And he's done that, but a penalty correctly awarded for Gateshead for a foul on Dijon Brown and Luke Hannon on hand to slip it past Jameson who did go the right way but just couldn't get the fingertips on it that were needed to keep it out and that is where we are it's one apiece Luke Hannon right, wide right hand side crossing the penalty area Pills are able to clear only as far as Francis back into Whelan who turns Adjamang is there Whelan back to Francis at the byline he's just trying to wriggle his way through instead he goes out to the right hand side no. And then a pass that just is to absolutely nobody other than the ball boy behind the goal of Pete Jameson, and it's out for a goal kick. Well, they've got some really good footballers, Rob. But you'd think if they were more, if they were more clinical, the top end of the pitch, Gateshead, mm. they could be out of sight. Yeah, I mean, you know, you see clinical. They've got a 25 goal striker yeah, on the bench. On the bench. They? But they, I mean, they're picking everything up. Pools are just giving the ball away there really cheaply. And then they're back on the defensive again. They need to keep it better, Pools, because if they don't, they're just going to be like this all night. And I don't like that. I don't like when Ed Francis is just dropping under no pressure whatsoever. He can turn and play forward. And now Kenton Richardson, unopposed, finds a, a pass through, but Aduro does well to latch onto a heavy touch. Now Pools have it just beyond their own penalty area with Onorise and Waterfall combining. Onorise back in field. This is much better from Pools. Featherston spreads a play out to the right-hand side, but they're still within their own half. Pools as Tom Parks brings it up towards the halfway line. Now in field for Adjumang. 
but it's it's happening too slowly, isn't it? It's yeah, the right it, stuff, but it's just happening yeah, too slow. Yeah, but I, I don't mind that because it's taking the sting out of Gates and they're back in the shape now. But pools aren't under any pressure. They can keep the ball, you know, just keep going. If you need to go backwards, go backwards. I mean, that's a really poor ball from Ferguson, just giving it back. Just rolled it up the line to no one. There's nothing wrong with going backwards and starting again. Just keep the ball for a little bit. Yeah, just take the pressure off your defence because at the minute it has been Gateshead asking the questions of the Pools defence and forward the white shirts come once more over on the far side in front of the large travelling army of Poolies. Sliding challenge there from Ferguson. Does well to win it and keep it in. Now, what can they do up the top end of the pitch? Infield, it comes to Nicky Featherston. Joe Gray is down off the ball, but pulls himself to his feet as Onorese now has it on this near side. Up towards the halfway line, Crawford. Again, just pulls, trying to have it and keep it for a spell. Long ball over the top for Crawford. Featherston is onside, and now the referee flags for a minute there. I thought the referee had maybe gone for a... Uh, sorry, the linesman had <laughs> yeah. maybe gone for a nap. Well... Because if he didn't he, spot that, I mean, we're, we're beyond, what? They were probably like 70 yards away and we saw that. Yeah, and he was, he was a good five yards offside, wasn't he? But it's that stupid role, isn't it, where he waits to see if he's going to run after the ball and get a touch and... Just a farcical rule. I bet you love VAR. Uh, oh... <laughs> Love it. Love it. The best thing ever. Listen, I, I was all for it. For VAR, I was in favour of VAR, but the way it's been implemented, and and I do think we need some rule changes just to to make it easier. You know, the offside rule needs changing for me. You know, you, you can't have a rule on VAR where it's trying to find ways to s stop goals happening. So if any part of your body is onside, I think it should be a goal. Yes, the I think that just needs changing from any part of your body offside. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. It just, Rather than being offside by yeah. the width of a shoelace. Yeah, you can be onside by the width of a shoelace. So it, it just, you get more goals, won't you? And that's what it's all about. You know, People want to come to football matches and, and see goals. Mm. You don't want to see goals get chalked off for people's shoelaces being offside. <laughs> Sometimes it can be the difference between which size boot you wear. Mm. Nicky um, Featherston which league you're playing yeah well yes absolutely <laughs> Nicky Featherston with a free kick for Pools right in front of the Gateshead dugout floated to the edge of the area doesn't quite make it through the bodies and now this is a chance and an opportunity for Gateshead to counter and counter quickly Whelan infield through the centre of the pitch does really well to just stop the move dead and all the Pools players went one way he went the other Whelan shaping to shoot edge of the area back out to the right hand side for Adom now Ed Francis, left-footed drive that goes over the crossbar of Pete Jamieson. And look at Jamieson's reaction to his defence. And the players in front of him smacking his hands together with frustration and pointing out a few people as well. well he he felt off. exposed there, Jamieson. Well, well, he did because, he, you know, even though it was a, a good break by Gateshead, they had plenty of time to get back pools, which they did. And then when Whelan had stopped it and made it to, to Francis, he was a good... 30 yards out but nobody went anywhere near him to close him down he took a little touch got his head up tried to weigh it up and then it's a real powerful shot over the bar but it wasn't that far over the bar and that's why Jameson's angry um, Gateshead might be in again here from the from the goal kick Whelan trying to pull the strings but the ball bobbles loose and Onorese clears over the top Joe Gray is racing through onto it but Nathan Harness the Gateshead keeper quick off his line to gather that right on the edge of his box and it's unrelenting from Gateshead at present isn't it it's as soon as it drops to them get it up the other end of the pitch but it's not by any stretch lumping it forward with reckless abandonment it's clinical decisive well they've got passing. so much room over that right hand side yeah Gateshead the pitch looks huge doesn't it yeah I mean, half of that is because Joe Gray's been asked to play when they haven't got the ball to go and play in behind Manny Desiree and try and help the midfielders. He's more central, so he's leaving a little gap out there on the right-hand side, and if Gateshead spot that, they could expose that second half. And Whelan, I know we've mentioned him a few times, but so he's impressed. All over, he's yeah. all over the pitch. He was out on the right-hand side, now he's on the left, and he's peeling off to Kenton Richardson. Back to Booty, now Hannant, trying to find a way down that left-hand side towards the byline, but Waterfall intercepts and the throwing goes the way of the home side much to the frustration of the 
former Grimsby man. So it's a throw in to Gateshead. Regan Booty collects the ball off the the sub, who's down there in his lime green bib doing his stretches. So Booty is going to launch this into the penalty area once more. That has been the theme of this first half. To the front post it goes, headed up but not out. It drops in a dangerous position and. Well done, Pete Jamieson, because he came out there and was strong and commanded his six-yard box and just said, I'm going to take this. And he needed to as well. Yeah, he did. He absolutely did. So, 44 minutes on the clock. You see, I'd like to, uh, instead of doing that, I'd like to see Pools trying to play out. Yeah, rather than launching it over well, the Well, all they've done is launch it, and, and if Manny wins a header, he wins a header. If he doesn't, then it just gives it Gateshead back. You know, they, no matter what happens with them, Gates are picking them all up and it's just coming back and it's coming back time and time again wheeling out on the right hand side and Ferguson is able to nick it off his toes and prod it behind for a corner to Gateshead their fifth of the game and pulls well, what was in the last minute Rob yeah last minute waiting for the fourth officials board to see just how long we will have we're going to see it now before this corner two minutes of stoppage time which we're into now time for this corner to be taken by Gateshead it's going to be an in swinger loops up high into the night sky headed over it was a free header as well and that is why the Gateshead defender has his head in his hands because he knows that was an opportunity and it remains Gateshead 1 Hartlepool United 1 on BBC Radio T Sports yeah it was a chance as well it was a decent ball in it was Lewis Story he was free just headed it up and over the bar, comfortably over the bar as well. But that was a chance. It was. So 1-1 one, one it remains. Pool's last visit here in 2018. Pool's lost that evening 2-1. But it was against the Gateshead side that consisted of one Luke Armstrong, another Luke Molyneux and Tom White, all who went on to play for Pool's. Dijon Brown on the attack for Gateshead, looks to find Whelan, but Pool's back. And able to defend and intercept that pass, but the clearance is straight to the white shirts of Gateshead. Ed Francis squares it now to Booty. Out it comes to this left-hand side for Hannon, who's hugging the touchline. Stands his studs up on top of the ball. Back to Kenton Richardson, advancing slowly towards the pool's penalty area. Squared all over to the far side for Kane Adom now. Onto his left foot. Ferguson staying with him. Into the dying embers at the end of this first half. One apiece. Gateshead on the attack. Whelan at the byline. Lifted up to the back post. Headed away by Onorise. But again, Pools just can't get the get the loose ball. And Gateshead have won a free kick. Yeah, Crawford just left a little bit on. I'm not sure who it was, the Gateshead player. How many national equals? Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, Gateshead will be going in at the break. Just wondering exactly how they are not in front, because at one apiece, I mean, you on have paper to say, it looks, it sounds different than what it is, yeah. which has been Gateshead dominance pretty they much. Well, they have been dominant, but I don't think they've made too much clear, too many clear cut chances. You know, Jameson's made a couple of saves, but nothing that you wouldn't expect him to make. Yeah. So but I think the the quality of chances will be the thing that Gateshead will be upset about free kick floated into the area pulls able to clear Adjamang underneath it Adjamang and Crawford getting in each other's win and across comes Desirue to header out into touch and that is the final moment of the first half a first half that has given us goals at least pulls opening the scoring on eight minutes Nicky Featherston a long ball over the top Joe Grades sprung the offside trap through on goal one-on-one -on -one with the keeper tried to Square it to Manny Desirouwe, and you thought the chance had gone as defenders got back, but Desirouwe got the ball out of his feet to Joe Gray, who found the angle and slipped it past Nathan Harness in the opposition goal. But from that moment, it has been all Gateshead. Pete Jamieson called into action with some shots from Ed Francis and others to name just a few, but 
the, the, the moment that really changed it in that first half. Dijon Brown receiving the ball on the half turn inside the penalty area. And as he tried to break and wriggle away from his marker, his feet were taken from underneath him. The referee pointed to the spot, upset Luke Hannant to level the scoring from the penalty spot. And since then, it has remained. All Gate said as they have flooded forward countless times without really testing Pete Jameson, perhaps as much as they their, their possession would, uh, would have dictated. But at the break, Pools still in it, Gateshead 1, Pools 1. Craig, your final thoughts on that first half? Well, I think Pools will be pleased to go in at 1-1. They had a really good start to the game, got got the goal from Joe. And then after that, they didn't really do anything. Gateshead, I, I thought, have looked really good with the ball. You know, they're really composed. They've got some really good footballers. They, they're making runs in behind. Midfielders are making runs, not really getting tracked. Pools need to do something, and they need to change it. I'm not sure a change of shape will do it, but they need to be a little bit braver. They need to, to keep the ball. They need to try and play out. They need to keep more possession because I counted the last seven times that Pete Jameson's had the ball or defenders have got the ball in comfortable possession and they've gone long. They've lost it every single time and it's just coming back at them and back at them and sooner or later, that's going to cost them. So they need to do something. They need to be a little bit braver for me. Um, maybe as the game goes on, the intensity will, will go out of Gateshead if they don't manage to get another goal. That's a hope, but it's no good hoping on things like that. You've got to be proactive and do something about it. So at the break, Matty, Gateshead 1, Hartlepool United 1. Be interesting to see if Kevin Phillips changes much going into the second 45, just with how dominant Gateshead were in that first half. 1-1, one, one, it is at the end of the first 45. Yeah, it sounds like a weird one because... As, as you've said there, Gateshead have been dominant, but then as Craig said as well, it, it, it doesn't sound like they've actually forced Pete Jameson into many saves. No, I mean, he's, he's, he's made one... Ed Francis had that really shot good in distance, save, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. Where he's got mm. down low to his right and, and made a decent save. But the other bits, they're things that you'd expect your keeper to save. So, the disappointment from Gateshead's point of view, and at half-time they'll be talking about it, is the quality of the chances that they're making because they've got down the sides of pools so many times. Cutbacks haven't haven't been met by anyone. Crosses into the box, dangerous crosses into the box, haven't been met by anyone. So that's that's their bit to work on. Pools' is bit to work on. They've got a bit more. They, they need to show a little bit more composure and a little bit more bravery for me. Rob, Craig, go and have a half-time couple. We'll be back to the International Stadium very shortly. Indeed, stay away from those gummy bears as well. Uh, we'll be back for second half commentary shortly in the National League. I can tell you at half-time at the brewery field, it remains goalless between Spennymoor Town and Scunthorpe United. So uh, Spennymoor nil, Scunthorpe United nil in National League North. We'll have all the rest of the scores for you and the goals from those from that first half after this. Amy Oakden at breakfast. Next weekend, it's Stockton calling. Morning, Shark. Who's on the lineup then? We've got Drunky Juno starting off the stage. Church Honey, who is um, a Stockton band. We have Jack, who's sat beside us right now. Yeah, this one's called Round in Circles. Acceptance is a virtue, a helping hand from up above. Going round in circles Amy Oakden at breakfast Weekdays from 6 BBC Radio Tees Proud to follow Hartlepool United BBC Radio Tees Sports And at half time over the International Stadium Pools hit the front, but have been pegged back against Gateshead. Joe Gray, it's over the top from Featherston, and Gray is in, 1v1, it's a heavy first touch, he needs to set himself, and he does, he sits it down, he squares it to Desiree. he can't sort his feet out, it's back to Joe Gray once more, onto his left foot, squares it, and buries it! Joe Gray, 10 for the season, two in his last two, and Hartlepool United made that look extremely difficult. But they managed to find the back of the net in the end. You thought that the chance was gone, but Dizaruwe back into grey, found the angle, 
and slipped it past Nathan Harness in the opposition goal. That is just the start that Kevin Phillips would have wanted eight minutes in. Gateshead nil, pulls one. Ed Francis finds Tinkler, looks to feed a ball through to Brown, who receives it and goes down inside the area. And that is a clear penalty to Gateshead. Dijon Brown received it, turned, and as he did so, his legs were taken from underneath him. Hannant against Jameson, right-footed. Oh, and Jameson goes the right way, but can't get anything on it. And Gateshead equalise. And for the second game in a row, pulls are pegged back by a penalty. Gateshead won, Hartlepool United won. Yep, and that's how it stayed until half-time. Pools uh, are drawing one all away at Gateshead elsewhere in the National League tonight. It is uh, Altrincham 1, Wilston 1 at the break, and Solihull nil, Southend 2. Bit of a turn-up down at Damson Park in that one. In the European, uh, well, the Euros uh, playoff finals that are taking place tonight, you've got uh, Georgia have booked their place at the tournament. That's some story. Uh, Georgia winning 4-2 earlier against Greece after that one finished 0-0. 4-2 uh, on penalties, I should say, after that one finished 0-0. Uh, Half-time in the other two. It is Ukraine nil, Iceland one, and Wales nil, Poland nil. A few international friendlies going on. One involving England at present, and England trail by two goals to one. Doesn't really tell the story of that first half, though. Uh, two defensive mistakes allowing uh, Yuri Tillemans to grab both goals for the Belgians down at Wembley. Uh, England with their goal coming from the penalty spot from Ivan Tony. Uh, elsewhere tonight, then, a couple of games uh, involving the home nations and Republic of Ireland. Uh, so Republic of Ireland trail 1-0 uh, at home to Switzerland at half-time. And Scotland against Northern Ireland is ongoing at present. Half-time in that one actually now. And it's Scotland 0, Northern Ireland 1. BBC Radio T's Sports. Scotland's poor form is continuing, isn't it, ahead of uh, the Euros. They'll be there. Wales hoping to join them. Goalless at the break at the Cardiff City Stadium against Poland in that one. Right, before we head back for second half commentary, we're going to talk Speedway because the season is upon us and the Red Bears kick off their campaign with the Titan Tees Trophy meeting on Good Friday before the action starts for real in the BSN series next week. I've been chatting to the Bears team boss, Gav Parr, ahead of the start of the new season. And I started by asking him, just to explain the background behind the red car uh, opponents this Friday, the Newcastle Select 11. Uh, Newcastle ceased trading as a Speedway team two years ago now with Israel. They started the season, but they didn't complete the season. So last year was the first full season without the Newcastle Diamonds for many, many years. And what, what we did on, on red car, obviously I'm, I'm from Newcastle. I, I grew mm. up as a Newcastle fan. You know, and, and there's a good few people on, at Red Car now who used to be either on the staff at Newcastle or they were fans of Newcastle or whatever, anyway. And and we just think it, it, it's something, A, you always want to start the season with it. It's like in football, like a pre-season friendly, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just decided what better way to do it than have our local, local rivals, although they no longer exist, have, have the name and have the local rivals. And this year, we give sort of George English, who was team manager at Newcastle for many, many years, him and Steve Brock, who was sort of on the on the, on the sort of promotional committee, um, we sort of give them a free reign to pick their own team. Um, so they, they came up with the team. It's, it's way above the points limit, let's say. So it's probably <laughs> going to be, it's probably going to be the strongest test we have all season. But, you know what it is? It, as I say, it's a bit like a preseason friendly. So you know, it, it's it's. I guess it's like Newcastle playing, not quite Real Madrid or something. But you know when mm. they used to sort of have a friendly against somebody a little bit better. But, England Brazil. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, it's it's you know it's going to be a really good test for our lads. Um, now I've already said I'm not making any changes at all. Everybody will get their program rides because. The idea is to get them track time and get them race fit. So, uh, and I and I don't think George on the other side. I'd say George stands next to me in the pits um, quite quite often in home matches, and he's been a team manager for twenty years plus. So, 
I've travelled to a few away matches with him in a, and I'm always picking his brains. He's Obviously, he's been there a long time, but he's going to be on the opposite side of the pits this, this week. So it, sh- it should be good, but the, the, we've put together, or they have put together a really strong diamond side. Um, as I say, we've got to be called a select side because obviously Newcastle Speedway um, no longer exists. So mm. it's sort of a Newcastle diamond select as such. But every one of the riders has rode for Newcastle in the past, which I think is, you know, you get some of these friends when they haven't even rode. But every rider has rode for Newcastle in the past. So that's good. They've all got diamond ties. And hopefully, the, you know, where, what we used to be when nearest and dearest rivals from up the A19 there come down they might only see one speedway meeting this season but if, if they see that black jacket with the white diamond on ho- hopefully it just gives them something to watch and I suppose as well it is doing a service to the speedway fans of the wider area and could result in more people as you say that have supported that Newcastle diamond side in the past coming down to Redcar so it benefits all parties yeah do you know what it is my I, I do that journey obviously every week for Speedo, but I also work down sort of in the Teesside area quite a bit mm. as well. And, and I, I drive down the A19, you know, I'd like a pound for every time I come down that road and back, to be fair. And it's <laughs> a really easy drive, honestly. You know what I mean? I, I can do it, like, and not breaking speed limits, I'm, you know, I can do it in 45 minutes easy. You mm. know what I mean? For, for As soon as you get to the time tunnel, with the new roadworks all completed on the A19 and stuff now, um, it's a really easy drive down. So, yeah, the, the idea... In the, there was a lot of Newcastle Speedway fans from the sort of Sunderland area, etc. So you're even mm. close at the Teesside, you know? So, yeah, you know, the, the ones from Sun, if, if they come along and, and, and watch a Newcastle team and, and see the product that we put on, um, and, and if we get another dozen or so fans making that trip down the A19, it, it, it serves its purpose and... I say that the, the main thing is it's a it's a free season friendly. It's something to get the you know cobwebs off, get get them racing for red car. But um, in the thing as well, it's got the Newcastle race jackets back back out of the cupboard, and they'll be worn worn again once more, probably for the only time this season. And uh, before that visit of Newcastle, Gav, um, there's a, a visit down to James Cook Hospital for an annual charity event that you like to do with the Bears. It is, yeah. We've done this for a number of years now. We um, ba- basically we ask the fans um, to donate Easter eggs um, or any type of sort of colouring in books and pens and any craft things, uh, and we deliver them normally on a Good Friday um, to James Cook, the children's department at James Cook uh, Hospital there. So, but yeah, there, there should be at least half a dozen of worth, not more of the Bears, as I say, I'm, I'm going to get get them up. Some of them have got matches on Thursday night, so it might be a little bit difficult to get them. But most of them, I would like like to think they'll be there at the James Cook um, doing a little bit for the community, doing a little bit for the, you know, the less fortunate children who are stuck in hospital over the Easter period. And um, we'll be we'll be delivering some sort of, some chocolate and some goodies, hopefully on, on Friday, I think late, late morning, early afternoon. A brilliant cause, Gav, and uh, and a meeting to follow it. Uh, tell us a little bit about when it is and, and how people can come along and watch them. So, yeah, so the season kicks off, you know, um, on Friday, Good Friday, 7.30 start. I think the gates open approximately 6.30. As I say, we, we have food outlets, we have a, a licensed bar. You can watch from terracing, you know, the there's lot, lots of spectator, you know, that their positions. We, with the only last year, I think it was, we opened the back straight, which gives you a fantastic view of the the whole race track. Um, and let, let's just pray that the the weather is kind to us, and that uh, yeah, we get we get team the team speedway back back uh, on Friday night. Gary Phillips. See, we've had an idea for Do A Loop yeah. with Scott Merck and I from the, uh, the Tonks Phillipson uh, production company that uh, Do A Loop uh, does a full album of ex-capologists. Yeah. So we started it with that one, Houdini. Houdini, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, 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 we would like to put the Great Soprano in there. Naturally, the Great Soprano would go in there great. all the time. David uh, Copperfield. Copperfield. Yeah, you go. There's what do no you one. call the fellow with the tash and the big hair? Um, oh, you know what I mean. Yeah, he, yeah. he looked like the yeah. drummer out of ZZ Top, yes, he but did. he was a he yeah. was a, a magician. Gary Phillipson. Weekday mornings from ten. With the new stock Agnew Wharton. <laughs> we, we could be BBC Radio Tees. 
This is BBC Radio T Sport with you through until 10 o'clock tonight here on BBC Radio T's. Uh, we'll be back to the International Stadium for second half commentary in a sec. Just quickly, time to mention Jack Simmer, who's been in touch on X. He says, not a bad her- first half of footy there. We're going to be tough in the second half. And he says, it's absolutely freezing here at the minute. And too many were toasty inside their glass fishbowl at the International Stadium. <laughs> is uh, Rob Law and Craig Hignett. Let's head back there for second half commentary, gents. Thank you. Welcome back to the glass box of emotion at the back of the main grandstand at the Gateshead International Stadium. I have to be honest, Craig. I mean, Matty Nixon said there that we're, we're nice and warm. It, it's cold in this room. It's, so, I mean, uh, I really do feel for the, the travelling poolies who are over on the, the stand on the far side, which has no roof and is fully exposed to the elements. I mean... I've just, well, it's, it is, it is well, chilly was, in here, you let alone yeah, out I mean, there. Listen, I was cursing the fact that I've brought two coats tonight Same. and I've got one that's open, so I've got a spare one if anyone over there <laughs> wants to just jog around the track. Yeah. You're more than welcome to come and get it. Well, that's it, they've got a running track, so you can, we could at least like run down there to keep warm, which is always... Uh, always available to us but two teams back on the field Hartlepool United will be kicking from right to left in this second half 1-1 is the score no sign of any changes at the break although uh, Luke Hannant just adjusting uh, his shirt and uh, has put some gloves on at the start of this second half which probably tells you all you need to know so Pools as you were uh, in the lineup uh, starting with Pete Jamieson in goal, a back three of Luke Waterfall, Tom Parks and Manny on a reset. Quaker would do row on loan from Derby County as your right wing back, David Ferguson, left wing back. A midfield three of Crawford, Captain Nicky Featherston, Trell Adjamang with Joe Gray, the goal scorer up front alongside Manny Desirouwe. As for the opposition, Nathan Harness in goal. Back three of Robbie Tinkler, Kenton Richardson and Louis Storey. Kane Adom and Luke Hannon as the wing backs, Callum Whelan. Uh, Captain Ed Francis and Regan Booty, your midfield with Kieran Evans playing just off Dijon Brown up front, the man who won the penalty in the first half for the home side. Thank you to Paul Freeman, who's been in touch on X uh, when talking about the pre-match snacks. Says uh, Craig Hignett, what, no red strawberries or chocolate footballs? That is poor from Craig Hignett. Anything, boys. It's poor from Craig Hignett. <laughs> that no, no, no strawberries or chocolate footballs. Disgraceful. <laughs> the gummy bears were nice though, but never happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just disgraced that you turned down my chocolate hobnobs. Dark chocolate, aren't they? Oh, yeah, well that makes it better. No, it doesn't. <laughs> It is Gateshead 1, it's Hartlepool United 1 on BBC Radio T-Sport. Gateshead on the attack with Hannon. Gets it back, nice little one two as he skips away from a challenge from Featherston. Back to Francis. Now to this right-hand side, looking for Evans. Low into the area, a little back heel from Whelan, but Featherston able to intercept. And then Manny Desiree, we're dispossessed. And Whelan has it back. He tangles with Whelan. Play on, says the referee. Whelan delivers low into the box. Cleared by Parks, but only half cleared. And then fired in. And Gateshead take the lead. I think it's Kieran Evans who got the final shot through a crowd of bodies. But whichever way you look at it, Gateshead make the advantage. Get the advantage take the chance when it comes and it's come just two minutes at the start of this second half it's Gateshead 2 it's Hartlepool United 1 and you can't say that hasn't been coming no I mean that's not what you want is it started the second half you want to start the second half a little bit differently but I thought there was a foul man it is a reway a little foul wasn't there there on Whelan but the referee he played advantage and when the ball come in it still could have been cleared and I think it was Parks who didn't get enough on the ball it fell lovely to Evans and it was a great strike with his right foot keeper had no chance Jameson yeah it was low to his right hand side past him before he could even see it yeah nothing Jameson could do about that but the, the clearance from Parks was wasn't the best it was straight to Kieran Evans inside the area who was able to rifle it in and Gateshead on the attack once more and confirmation Kieran Evans the goal scorer and that makes it for him his third of the season on loan from Cardiff City actually made five appearances in the championship for Cardiff City finds himself here on loan and netting 
his third of the campaign and that if you're a manager Craig Hignett well what does that do you've just well, given your team talk you. you've just set you stall up for the next 45 minutes and then two minutes in that happens yeah I mean it, from a Harleyville point of view it, it kills you doesn't it but I did say if they didn't change that something you know something had happened they have to be proactive and there was only one outcome if they kept playing the same way well, they have kept playing the same way and Gateshead have taken the lead and Gateshead come forward once more they just like they're waiting for it to happen yes you know without doing anything about it they're just letting Gateshead do what they want to do well, it's almost there's like an air of inevitability mm. about it isn't there it's yeah no, it's just like you get the ball you can get turned you can play your pass I'll close you down but I won't really close you down I'll just get somewhere near you you know they need to be a little bit more aggressive I think they need to be a little well a lot more braver they need to try and play the way out keep the ball a, better, a bit better there's a goal kick uh, sorry a free kick to to Pools see there's too many of that too much of that I don't know why why they don't try and play the way out well we've uh, at least open it up and, and let Gateshead try and try and create spaces by trying to close them down in wrong areas and Pools maybe play behind them and get Joe Gray in 1v1 because he's been the one yeah see you here again too they're easy for Gateshead yeah all, all the midfield are doing a Hartlepool is just dropping back into an area and the amount of space that Ed Francis has mm. in the in the centre of the field now is Pools Look to try and build with Manny Desirue. Does well to turn away from two white shirts and then gives it away. Wins it back though. Desirue trying to do it all by himself. Prods the ball through to Joe Gray. Right hand side tries to wiggle his way through but loses his footing on the 18 yard line. His feet went from underneath him. And that allows Gateshead to clear. And there is white smoke drifting through the evening you sky. You, you, can, you can. You really can. It stinks. But the flares. And the pyrotechnics let off by the home fans in this main stand in celebration of the playoff hopefuls coming from 1-0 down to lead 2-1 against Pools here at the Gateshead International Stadium this evening on BBC Radio T Sport. Gateshead dispossessed on the halfway line Crawford and Joe Gray Gray accelerating into the opposition half he's been tugged back but Pools look to play on Desirue as the referee pulls it back for a free kick for the foul on Gray but already there's a yellow card there for the Gateshead man but already signs of encouragement yeah, I mean, they, they were both bad balls from Gateshead when they give it away needlessly. We haven't seen too many of that, or too much of that tonight. But Pools really need to get a little bit higher up the pitch. It's all right having free kicks from 30-odd yards away. I know they're a threat from them. So the more set pieces they can get, the better. Featherston with the free kick lifted into the area, all the way through to the byline. Waterfall keeps it in, needs a bit of help, and then he's tumbled to the floor has a little puff of his chest out towards the Gateshead man as Pearls have a throw in parallel with the Gateshead penalty area shot to Adjimang now Ferguson back to Featherson space for him to deliver the cross and does it's inviting but it bounces all the way through into the arms of the Gateshead keeper and just away from Joe Gray who was lurking inside the box yeah I mean it would have been some header wouldn't it yeah from there still smell that uh, yeah, that smoke grenade that was let off by the, the Gateshead fans it's lingering in that in this box <laughs> at least I hope that's what it is well, it's, uh, it's not those gummy yeah, bears well, Craig isn't it gone right through <laughs> me <if> I, <laughs> I apologise, listeners. Craig Hignett, our expert summariser for Hartlepool United. Pools trailing 2-1 oh, By the way, you've Gator. had more gummy bears than I have. I don't know what you're talking about. Crossing at the penalty area. Luke oh. Hannon, free header! Oh. And there's the third. Dijon Brown punishes Hartlepool United. The cross from Hannon at the byline. Brown was free inside the six-yard box. Pools defence all at sea. And Brown makes no mistake, seven in seven now for the Derby County Lawnee. And Gateshead 
fully deserve this lead. They've started the second half at a speed which Pools just haven't been able to cope with. Gateshead three, Pools one. Well, that's just simple play. It's a little one-two down the right-hand side, gets to the byline. It was a brilliant ball in. But when you've got someone who scored six in the last six just standing in the middle of the six-yard box with nobody near him and you're playing three centre-halves, then you've got to ask some serious questions. Easy header, couldn't miss. Disastrous start to the second half for Pools. I have to say, you, you do worry for the rest of the game, Rob. You know, this could be anything. So much early promise when Pools took the lead I eight mean, minutes in. It's just... But since then... How many long balls are he playing? Just aimless long balls. Since that Joe Gray opener, eight minutes in, it has been all Gateshead, and now they are making it count. All the possession they had in that first 45 is now paying dividends in the second half with two goals no. in quick succession to take them from 1-all to 3-1. And we said it right from the beginning, but you can see why Gateshead are where they are in the National League this season. But Pools just haven't been able to match them. As the Gateshead goalkeeper clears his lines up to the halfway line. Luke Waterfall clatters into Brown. Featherston fighting for a loose ball in midfield and loses out. Kieran Evans comes out on top with that one. Don't forget, Pooleys, if you want to have your say, you can text 81333, start your message with the word tease. We're also on X, formerly Twitter, at BBC Tease Sport, or personally, at Rob Law Tease, if you want to send us your thoughts of what you're watching, what you're hearing tonight. In the back of this main stand, myself, Rob Law, and Craig Hignett. There's a sliding challenge. Nicky Featherston able to ride that and lay the ball back to goalkeeper Pete Jamieson, who's had to pick the ball out of his net three times this evening. But you would say none of the goals have necessarily been his fault. I don't know if you could maybe say, could he have come for that cross into the penalty area? Is, so, is that more of the, the yeah. defenders? I think defenders have got a shot. I mean, look at this shot again. from distance that is well wide from Gateshead. They're just standing so far off Gateshead. Pools. You know, he's got so much space there to work with. I think it was Luke Hannon, wasn't it? Yeah. Got himself in a shooting position. Nobody closed him down. It's a pet hate of mine when people in the edge of the area just blew the ball over the bar under no pressure, Rob. And that's what he did, thankfully. I think it was Evans, actually. It wasn't Hannon. Parks bringing the ball out from defence to Ferguson. Adjimang. Ferguson once more. Waterfall. Well, Pools, 3-1 down, 56 minutes on the clock. Crawford finds a do rope. What can he provide from a wide area? Shorty goes to Featherston. Now Adjumang, edge of the D, trying to find an angle, but the door is quickly closed in his face, so he has to pick another option. Waterfall out to Ferguson, attacking the defender, low ball into the area, Desiree is there, but it's touched behind, and it is a corner to Pools. Well, it was dangerous, wasn't it? It was a low ball in from Ferguson, from his left-hand side. Desiree just kind of crossed the front of his marker, tried to flick it with the outside of his foot. Goldwoods just took a nick. Well, Kevin Phillips has seen enough. Kweku Aduro is going to come off. Just his second appearance in a Pools shirt. He is replaced by Callum Cook, whose first job is to be the short option from this corner, but the referee, Dale Baines, puts a halt to that. And Pills are going to have to retake this corner. So a change made by Kevin Phillips. Get Craig Hignett's thoughts on that very shortly, but first this corner. Delivered by Featherston to the back post. It's headed away by Brown, only as far as Cook, fresh off the bench. 
finds Crawford. Back out to the left-hand side for Featherston, who's got acres of space and time to pick his spot and pick his pass. He does so. A nice one-two. Back to Featherston inside the area. Now Ferguson floated into the box once more. Headed away. Might drop for Featherston. Just away from him. And Gateshead can clear up to the halfway line with Adjumang in a foot race with Adom. He clears, but it's straight to a Gateshead shirt. Adjumang slides in and completely misses the ball. And now a through ball into the area. And Adom is there, but... A sliding challenge from Parks. And the ball goes behind for a corner. A little bit of afters between Adom and Parks well, it there. Wasn't. It was afters by Parks. Yeah. Adom didn't do anything. He, he slid in Parks. It was a brilliant challenge. And then getting up, he needlessly stood on him. He's lucky to get away with that. The referee yeah. hasn't seen it properly. And he, he does, knows what he's done there. And he does get away with it as mm. well. But from defence to attack in one swift move there. Just uh, Callum Cook coming on for Aduro. Yeah, I mean, Aduro hasn't really been in the game, has he? He's no. worked hard enough on that right-hand side, but hasn't really been in it. Callum Cook, we know what he's capable of. Corner taken short by Gateshead. Back out to Francis, delivered into the area. High, headed away by Waterfall, only as far as Booty! <laughs> who finds the back of the net? Through a crowd of bodies, pulls undone by a set piece once again, failed to clear the lines, and Regan Booty struck it through a mass of pool shirts. Jameson rooted to the spot, nothing he could do about that, and pools from being one nil up are now four one down. What to say about that? But Rob, I'm not surprised because they've stood off them all night and there again, every second ball they've picked up Gateshead. It was a good finish, by the way, by Booty. You know, it was sort of half cleared, it, it fell to him in the box, nobody cleared him, nobody closed him down. He's got two or three yards of space and just struck it with his left foot. This time it goes to Jameson's left, he's got no chance, struck it well, low into the corner. I mean, it could be anything this game, Rob. I don't really know what Pools are trying to do. I don't know how they're trying to play. I mean, you can see it a clear way at Gateshead are playing. Oh, they're in again. They're in again. Out on this near side, Dijon Brown breaking inside the box. Onto his left foot, he cuts it back and Pools and Ferguson are able to intercept and clear out into touch. In fact, it's going to be a free kick for Pools, mm. which helps alleviate some of the pressure. An update from Spenning Moore very shortly on the latest there. But it is Jameson to take this free kick. But it's all too easy. Yeah, I mean, that was just one ball. We haven't seen that before, where it's just one ball gets Brown in and tried to cut it back on his left, and it was a good interception in the end. Whelan. Infield to Ed Francis, and it's rinse and repeat, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's just... It's just a pattern of play. Yeah. You know, it's the same pattern of play. Pools have done nothing to stop it. I mean, look at that. The, uh, the time and space for him to get it, get turned, get his head up. Francis look. delivered into Hannon. Brown is there once more inside the six-yard box, but this time his header is over the crossbar. He should have scored. He should have scored. He got between the two centre-backs, Parks and Waterfall. And look at Waterfall now. You see, Rob, I don't see the point of playing three centre-halves if you've got none of them who are going to come out with the ball. So not one of them will, will join in with the ball. And you, and you need you need overloads in midfield. So if one of them steps forward, it brings a, a Gateshead player out to try and close him down. Then he can find his passes around him. But if you see the three centre-halves of Hartlepool, they just stay in. They don't go anywhere. And more often than not, they just hit long balls. Well, Pools have conceded three goals in this second half. Spennymo have taken the lead against Scunthorpe. So Graham Lee's run with the Moors continues as they fight for a playoff spot. At this rate, you'd absolutely back them to sneak mm. into their playoffs, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, well, that's the only seven, seven in a row, will it? Yeah. Seven in a row. So Spennymo won Scunthorpe United nil in the National League North. Here in the league above. It is not good reading, it's not good listening because it is Hartlepool United who took the lead on eight minutes. 
and are now trailing 4-1 against playoff hopefuls Gateshead. Long ball forward and Onorise scrambles the ball out of play. Mickey Barron's being in touch just saying what am I watching here with three emojis where the monkey's covering his eyes. Mm. Probably tells you everything you need to know. It has been one of those nights and Pools run without a win will stretch from four games to five. So Gateshead with a throw midway inside the Pools half of play. Wide left hand side. And well they're losing the discipline. Well yeah Crawford just I mean, swung just, a boot. That's a yellow card all day long. Referees let him get away with it again. But it's just it 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 tells you so much about where the team is at in this game, doesn't it? Yeah. Frustration. Well, they know they're getting outplayed, and there's nothing you can do about it. They just need to make sure that they don't do anything stupid. Keep 11 men on the pitch. Write this one off. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's only 65 minutes on the clock. It's still a long time to play, but it's, goals are only going one way at present. I'm not by any way suggesting that Pools are going to get back into this, but... A diagonal ball from Callum Cook might have something to say about that. Finds Joe Gray. He needs to watch his back because he's being quickly closed down. He's got Adjumang to his right. Joe Gray goes by himself, but it was always high, rising and wild. Behind for a goal kick, and it remains Gateshead 4, Hartlepool United 1. Good crossfield ball by it was. Callum Cook, wasn't it? Got Joe Gray where you want him, 1v1. He was closed down really quickly, actually, with people getting back. I think it was Evans who was getting back as well really quickly. And in the end, the shot was was poor. Gateshead just want it more, don't they? Well, they know what they're doing. I mean, yeah. look at this. You know, it. I mean, Pearls have been so far off them. So far off them. It, it's been so easy. Get it, get turned. Midfield players, get your head up. Just play a little ball in. I'll get it back. I'll play a little wide one. No one near him. Yeah, literally no, oh, one, no near one near Hannon into the area for Evans once more, but his shot is blocked by Parks and Pools are it. being exposed. I, I can't believe how many times a midfielder's got in. You know, it's all right at centre-half saying to a midfielder, well, you're not going with your runner, but there's three centre-halves. They're there to spot the danger. They, they should be spared. There's only one centre-forward. So what are the other two doing, the other two centre-halves? Well, I'm just as uh, Ed Francis slowly comes over to take this corner. I'm just looking at some of the score lines this season for Pools, and this would be up there as one of their heavier defeats. Not the heaviest, but certainly up there. Corner quickly taken. Whelan looks to deliver into the front post, headed away by Featherston, only to Evans, who hits it on the half volley and fires it straight over the crossbar for a goal kick. So just to run through some of the. Uh, bigger defeats this season. Oxford City 5, Hartlepool United 2. That was back in September. There's also a defeat to Bromley. Hartlepool United won Bromley 4. So this is in that bracket as the home side make a change. And it's going to be the number 10, Greg Ollie, who comes on. He is going to replace goal scorer. Kieran Evans, the Cardiff City Loney, who's added to his tally this season here tonight. He gets a pat on the back from the coaching staff. And Carl Magnair, the former Pooley, down there in the Gateshead dugout. So Greg Ollie comes on. And off goes Kieran Evans, who certainly grew into the game, didn't he, from the Gateshead perspective? Yeah, he did. He was all over the place, you know. They, they're really important, them wider midfield players for Gateshead, making runs and making defenders think and make decisions. Do I go with him? Do I leave him? Where's the midfielder? Why isn't he come with him? But like I say, there's, there's three centre-halves and there's only one centre-forward. So there should be two centre-halves of Hartlepool who are spared all the time. Well, thank you to... Uh our former expert summariser Eddie Kyle who's uh, just been in touch he says um, I'm listening to you two and watching Scotland versus Northern Ireland I think I'll take up Tiddlywinks instead <laughs> that's because Northern Ireland are beating Scotland by one goal to nil and Pools here are trailing 4-1 against Gateshead Eddie you've got the right idea <laughs> can me and Craig get in on the Tiddlywinks mm. please 
<laughs> I had a decent record watching pools. Well, that's just been obliterated now, hasn't, hasn't it? it? Just? Yeah, the gummy bears couldn't help you there, my no. friend. Gateshead on the attack once more. Through ball, fed into Callum Whelan. See but there, so there, Whelan's made a run. You've got two centre-halves closing him down. So, what are they both doing? I mean, there's parks and waterfall there. Is Manny on a reset in? And has he, has he got the centre-forward, Brown? I don't think so. He was far post. I mean, there's so many things that are, are not right Yeah. with, with tonight. You know, and I don't know whether that's a one-off or whether it's the way they've set up, or but they just don't look... They look disjointed, Hartlepool. They don't look like there's a, there's a set pattern of how to get out, how to play out, what you're looking for to play forward, how you're going to get forward as a team. Well, 68 minutes on the clock. And this is... Uh, I mean, see that there, that nice little ball in, little one touch back. It's Gates said they were playing all the stuff. They... Well, Pills just can't get hold of the ball. And then when they do, they can't keep oh. it. Oh, through a ball that was way too easy for Gateshead there. As Greg Ollie is dispossessed by Onorese, and then Onorese slips and gives it straight away to Whelan. 35 yards out, back to Ed Francis, edge of the D. Oh, flicked into the area for Brown. Oh, and finished beautifully. It was... A stunning move from Gateshead, you have to say. But it was all too easy. And once again, it came from defensive errors and sloppy possession from Pools that opened the door for Gateshead to add their fifth of the game. And Kevin Phillips is looking at his heaviest defeat since taking over Pools this season. It's Gateshead 5 it's Pills 1. Well, it's a brilliant play from Gateshead, isn't it? It was a really poor ball from Manny on a reset. Don't really know what he was trying to do with it. But the minute he gave it away, they were in trouble. Lovely little ball through. And then was it Whelan with a little lift? Just lifted the ball over to Brown. And then his little dinked finish over Jameson. Really good football. In off the post as well. Yeah. Just on the oh, far side. Helps. I mean, I can't see the post from here. I just see the ball <laughs> it's just as well you can't see I the know, post, Craig, I mean, honestly. You know, it's... It's really poor. It's really poor from Pools, but Gateshead, they've in been, that moment... They've been brilliant. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to say, Gateshead have been absolutely superb tonight. You can dress it up all you want. But Gateshead have just been far superior. You have to say that now and again. You know, they've been done... And beaten by a better side. And I'm, I'm they haven't laid a glove on them. No, and I'm drastically running out of paper in which to note all these goals down for, for Gateshead. And you're going to need some more, mate, because <laughs> the way it's going, we're, what, we just on the 70th minute, 71, 71 minutes, minutes yeah. almost. There's still 20 minutes plus an injury, whatever the referee puts on. I mean, it could get worse yet. It absolutely could. Dejon Brown has two for his night's work to take him to eight goals in seven games. I mean, he's been a find on loan from Derby County at 18. Just, yeah, hasn't he just... Jamaican under-23 called up to the under-23 team. You can I mean, he's, he's got a good shape, hasn't he? You yeah. know, he's, again, you talk about physicality in this league and you need it, especially when you're a young lad. He's certainly got it. He's got plenty of pace, good strength. And it's explosive pace as well, yeah. isn't it? It's not that... And that slow acceleration when he when he puts his foot on the gas he goes and what I, what I like about him is he gets in the middle of the goal Rob yeah and he gets and between the two him, centre backs he's, he's between two centre backs and he's in the middle of the goal well Pools just can't live with Gateshead at the minute N not necessarily at the minute just this game entirely Whelan on the attack once more Hannant lifted into the area headed away by Waterfall Ed, Franc Ed Francis fancies it from distance instead he chips it into the area and Whelan tries to round the goalkeeper and it's six you can spell it out you can put it in brackets but whichever way you see it it still reads Gateshead six Hartlepool United won Whelan gets the goal that he so richly deserves. He's been really impressive for the home side this evening. He has been the architect of this impressive win for the playoff hopefuls and the downfall 
of Hartlepool United whose winless run will stretch now to five games Gateshead six Hartlepool United one and it is the biggest defeat of the season so far Rob the like statues you know you see that the back four or back five whatever it is coming out another little lift of ball another little run from Whelan that nobody went with nobody reacted to it they all just stood and watched another little dink over Jameson I mean, well, it's, the golf has been fast. It has. On comes Tom Allen. Off goes Kane Adom. There's a change for pools as well, which is going to see Courtney Duffus come on to replace Manny on a reset. Well, if you're Kevin Phillips now, Craig, biggest defeat of the season so far. There's still over 15 minutes to play. I mean... What's going through your head if you're in that dugout? I've been in dugouts at six. I think we've got some six at Stevenage once. Um, it must be a very lonely place it's horrible. on nights like it's this. It's horrible. You know, you, you just want it to end, really. It's the worst feeling in the world. A heavy defeat is really, really poor to take. You know, it's, it's embarrassing. You know, you, you feel embarrassed at the end of the game. You, you'd feel embarrassed. So Courtney Duffus on, on a reset, off. Free kick to Pools. Midway inside the gate's head half. Featherston lifts into the area, to the back post. Drops down inside the box, but Dijon Brown is able to clear into touch. Well, this result for Pools will uh, certainly not be doing... The many favours in the National League, of course. Coming into this one, <laughs> there were five <laughs> points. I've seen it all now. Do you want to describe that? Well, Adjiman went to take a throw in, and the ball slipped out the back of his hands, and he's through fresh air. <laughs> well, many of the Hartlepool United fans over on the far side have decided they have seen enough. And to be completely honest, you can't blame them. Many of them are probably making the journey back down the A19 as we speak. Gateshead 6, Hartlepool United 1. Bear in mind, it was 1-all at half-time. It, it has been a collapse, yeah. Rob, and, and goals have been similar. You know, they've been similar goals. They haven't, they haven't learnt anything in the game. You know, as a player, you, you play a football match, but all the time you're learning about what a team's trying to do, what their players are trying to do. You know what? But it just... It just feels like they've gone through the motions. They haven't really tried anything different. They've just accepted what's going to happen. Well, Gateshead now will climb up to fourth on 66 points. So they'll be four points behind Bromley in third, who are on 70. Having played the same amount of games, Hartlepool United, meanwhile, will remain 14th, five points from the bottom four and the worry is Craig is that well it's what this <clears throat> you know it's all right getting a defeat but it's the type of defeat yeah it's it, mentally I mean, this is, yeah this what is it does. a soul destroying defeat it's not a one where things have gone against you it's it's one where you've been totally outplayed totally outclassed been battered and you're right it's it's what it does mentally to you you know the next game if they go a goal down Will the same happen? Well, Pools have a throw just short of the halfway line. Gateshead going to make a change. And Ben Warman is going to come on. And he replaces Callum Whelan. And listen to the reception that Whelan is getting. He turns to applaud the, the Gateshead fans in this main stand down in front of us. He has been brilliant this afternoon. He's been outstanding. He's been one of the best players I've seen in the National League this yeah, season. He has. By far. He's been outstanding. Just absolutely ran the midfield. He's been everywhere on the pitch. He's been decisive with his passing. And he's got his goal as well to boot. Three in his last three. Six for the season. 
a really impressive display from Whelan as Courtney Duffus tries to win possession in midfield but loses out Joe Gray tries to close his man down but space opening up for Gateshead as a through ball is blocked by Adjumang and out for a throwing over on the far side that clock's moving very slow down there Craig Hignett it's only on 79 minutes it's moved very slow since about the ninth minute when Pools went into the lead yeah I mean you know Pools are they've gone to a back four now haven't they with Adjumang as a right back and Ferguson playing as a left back but it's I mean it's all too late for that isn't it oh Gateshead down oh. the left hand side coming away with it this could yet get worse for Pools at the angle inside the six yard box it rebounds wildly and goes out behind for a corner but it was a substitute Tom Allen well it was a brilliant run yeah down that left hand side which is completely just, unopposed well he was he, he just pushed it and went and that was it he'd gone he showed really good pace Pools have done well just to smother it and get it behind for the corner corner to Gateshead an in swinger right to the front post it rebounds up Tinkler is there at the angle manages to get it away and recycle back into the box it bounces all the way through Ferguson doesn't get there slides in at the second attempt Regan Booty tries to curl one and it clips off the post <laughs> Pools escape they're just all over the place Rob they can't clear their lines can they everything that's fallen the Gateshead players onto it and there Regan Booty just won a tackle Ferguson went in the ball ricocheted to Booty and then he just tried with his left foot to bend it in the far post and he wasn't a million miles away just clipped the outside of the post and went behind for a goal kick Pete Jamieson completes the clearance up to the halfway line. See, well, that's all it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's aimless at this point, yeah, isn't I it? I mean, he doesn't need to kick the ball. He's not getting closed down by anyone. The two centre-halves can split and, and play. Hannant <laughs> has Gateshead attack yet again for the umpteenth time. Blocked by Parks. And another corner. Nice give a goal kick. Oh, get a goal kick, I beg your pardon. And Gateshead... Uh, complaining I think the ref's feeling sorry for them now yeah. <laughs> well yet yeah, more and more travelling poolies drifting out of the stadium and who can blame them the biggest defeat of the season to their nearest rivals and pools will be travelling back down the A19 firmly with their tail between their legs Terrell Adjumang looks to unleash the run of Joe Gray but he can't get there might win it at the byline and does but goes out of play for a goal kick the good news is there's only nine minutes left well it can't go quick enough <laughs> for me Rob uh, I mean you, you don't know where they go from here do you Pools like I say it's, it's a demoralising defeat but it's how you pick yourself up I mean Kevin Phillips has got a hell of a job trying to pick the players up Julie's been in touch she says uh, can't believe what I'm listening to Gateshead have ripped us apart we were 1-0 up now 6-1 down they need to do something for the next game uh, and the games that are left well I think it's, it's the most one-sided game I've seen yeah in a long long while Stephen says uh, I don't know why I'm still watching this <laughs> and Michael just says simply embarrassing is some of the thoughts from those of you listening with us tonight on BBC Radio T Sport it has been a lesson in levels of this game and the levels to the National League and at present pools are far from the level that is required to get out of this division and it has been put on display for all to see here this evening I mean it'd be interesting to see what Kevin Phillips has to say afterwards I don't know what you say afterwards I, I, don't, I think you've just got to be completely honest haven't you just say you're outplayed you're nowhere near it but, but, the question is, but the question is why though isn't it they're not good enough Rob that's the 
the be all and end all is they're not good enough as a, as a side they're a million miles away from where you need to be to get in and around that playoff spot and, and talk about promotion you, you have to kick on again but that all it all costs and unless you've you're willing to to spend some money on some decent players I think you're always going to be looking for people like Brown you know you, you, you're talking loan players 18 year olds from good clubs who are going to come in and are, are much better than the level and lift you and then well then, Gateshead have one of those in, in prime well, example of Dijon Brown yeah well that's what I'm talking about Brown so if even if even if they do get up he's going to go back he's going to go and play somewhere else so you're starting again but you'll start again from a worse position because your low knees have gone down. it's a bit like Middlesbrough this season you know they, they lost all the low knees end of the season Tuber Akplom went yes but they haven't been able to replace them and you've seen what's happened to them and, and pools it, it's exactly the same doesn't matter what level you're at money talks it does I mean we've done we've done a study on it didn't we with of budget and where these teams were compared to the budget and the years we've done it I think there's, there's normally two teams who do better than it but generally you finish two places above or two places below where your budget is mm. I think the year we've done it Accrington they were the ones who they ended up getting promoted Accrington who had one of the smallest budgets but they had Crooks and Windass two young players who were much better than the level yeah obviously they both went playing in the championship or were playing in the championship until Crooks left went to the MLS but those two players made a massive difference and Pools at the moment haven't got any players like that no not one and it all is, it is all too apparent isn't it I mean it's mm. it's playing out I mean, in front of us as we speak you're looking at players there how many players there can, can make a step up so how many Pools players can you see now that'll make a step up Joe Gray maybe maybe there's a rue but he's I mean Joe's 20 now if he's not playing higher up by the time he's 21 22 you would suggest that he's not going to be you know being able to play in, in the championship say might have a decent career at League 2 or League 1 somewhere Desiree weighs what 20 29 26, 29? 29 yeah 20. well, he's, and he's, he has been in the National League but but he's not suddenly go, going to go at 29 no. and go and play in the championship no. or go and play in, in wherever like I say might have a, a few games in League 1 maybe maybe League, League 2 certainly hmm but you're looking at players who, who they need to be better than that and they're always young players on loan who you get like the Browns you know they've took a, a gamble on him he's come good I think Luke Molyneux was one who, who Gateshead again they got him on loan and he, he tore the, the National League up obviously a league player so you're always looking for players who you think can go higher well there is four minutes left to play Pools have a free kick right hand side just outside the the area there's a two man gateshead wall and for the poolies who have have remained inside the the stadium this would only be a consolation if it did go into the back post hands oh. up and over the crossbar the fact that you got excited about that well i, I just want to you how long the, of an after yeah, an well, evening just, it's been i just want them to score a goal and you know at least finish the game with a good feeling because the second half, this this could demoralise people. Uh, Mrs. Richardson on uh, on X it says, "You're dead right. We're heading down the A19 as I speak. It's a disgrace to play like that in front of that away following. Zero passion or commitment. And that's the other thing, isn't it? When you when you have that following of 850 odd poolies who've made the journey. Yes, granted." short journey but they've turned out in the numbers to support mm. their team and I mean the one thing I will say is you don't play bad on purpose yeah and you know the worst thing that can be labelled that yet is just the quality is not there yeah is, is you've got no passion he's offside offside flag is, up. is that you, you've got no passion or pride or because a lot of them will have but they're just not good enough I mean it's really hard in when you when you're 6-1 down and you're coming to the last embers of a game you know you, you're doing your best not to get sent off if I'm honest that's the way I used to you know you used to lose your head and you used to want to want to do something but there doesn't seem to be anything like that in this pools team 
And how difficult is it to pick up a team after a result like this? Massively difficult. Yeah. Massively difficult. As the attendance confirmed this evening, 2,685. That includes 1,314 from the uh, the travelling poolies. Well, I'm shocked at that. I mean, there's That's not that now, is there? Oh, incredible there's following. There's not even half of that now. No, absolutely incredible following. Over it, almost... Almost 1,500 travelling poolies. That's and they see twice the, local. Yeah. It's, yeah. And they see the heaviest normal. defeat of the yeah. season. It's horrible. Well, we have a full roundup of all the scores with Matty Nixon on the full-time whistle. As soon as referee Dale Baines puts us out of our misery, and it is a miserable night if you're following Hartlepool United. Gateshead on the attack once more. Hannon on this near side, delivered into the area to the back post, and it's headed behind for a corner to the home side. Well, how many times have they got down this right-hand side? In Too the many times. Half? Yeah, put dangerous balls in. It's unbelievable. Luke Hannon, it was this time. This time getting down there, took a free, a, a quick corner, got in too easy here. Yeah. And they're in again, oh. right to the six-yard box, and Desiree were there to put behind his own goal. Well, they have stopped playing now, Pooh. Yeah. That's just a quick corner. Nobody reacted to it. Well, Gateshead with the corner. And this really will test uh, even the, the thickest of resolve from Pooley's. Oh. On the ball, sneaks in from the corner. It's an own goal. Gates said, have another. Tom Allen is celebrating. The corner swung in and flicked on. It slipped past Jameson. And Gates said, have seven. Yes, seven. You're hearing that right. It is a night to forget. With 1,314 travelling poolies in attendance, it is by far the largest defeat of the season and an embarrassing night for everyone connected with Hartlepool United. Well, I think that one was an own goal. It was just a near post corner. I don't know if it was Duffus who was coming back and facing the wrong way, just got a little flick on it. And the type of night it is, it's just nestled in that far corner. Six goals in the second half, Craig. Know, it was one all at half time. Yeah. Yeah. You're not invited back. <laughs> Listen, I'd, I'd happily not come back. <laughs> no, if it meant Pearl's getting points, I'd happily not come back. It's just stark. <sighs> Given away by Gateshead, Pools pick up possession, Ferguson, 35 yards out, drifting left and then right, back to Tom Parks, the Gateshead fans in front of us are dancing in their seats, Waterfall, out to Adjumang down the line looking for Gray who tries to twist and turn rolls his studs across the top of the ball Adjumang continues his run on the overlap cut into the six yard box that one's into the side netting and the Gateshead fans taunt the Pooley supporters well that was great side. play by Adjumang I have to say it was the yeah. first time we've seen a right back overlap Joe Gray and get played in just couldn't find the final pass corner to Pools the fourth of the game swung into the front post in, headed away by Brown and Brown tries to twist and turn his way down that left hand side well I mean everything is just immaterial now what's happening in front of us isn't it it's yeah. just like there's there's no he just needs to put us out of our misery doesn't he yeah Explode. We've got the, the worst. The it's worst not doing part. doing anyone any favours. Well, no. The worst part of it is we've got seven minutes of stoppage time. We're in the 92nd minute. I mean, where, where did it get seven minutes from? Uh, yeah. Well, there's been plenty of goals Bare to goals, celebrate. Yeah. For that sport, goals and there? subs. There's been goals and subs have been a plenty. 
Well, Pools next in action on Good Friday at home against Halifax. I mean, look at that. I mean, again, he's oh, just come Pools off. Pools has switched off yet turned. again. Wow. A ball out to the left-hand side. Breaking inside the box, Jameson comes out, closes the angle to deny Tom Allen. But again, all too easy. If he'd have got his head up there, it was a another goal. Just needed to get his head up earlier and square it earlier. But again, midfield players coming off, getting turned. Playing it to midfield players further forward, coming off, getting turned. I've lost count of the amount of times I've seen that happen tonight. Chris has been in touch, he says, an absolute embarrassment. Every one of them needs to apologise, playing like they've already secured league safety. On this evidence, we're deep in the mire. How on earth do they pick themselves up for Friday? As Gate said, come forward once more. A hopeful crossing the penalty area, headed away by Parks, because Dejon Brown was looking for his hat-trick, breathing down his neck. Another corner for Gateshead. Some good news this evening is that England have just scored with the last kick of the game against Belgium. Jude Bellingham with the goal. England 2, Belgium 2. Gateshead with a corner, looking for their eighth of the game. Yes, really. Pulls able to clear up towards Cook. And swept all the way back to goalkeeper Nathan Harness away to our left hand side. Ed Francis picks up possession, running at the Pools defence once more. Brown looking for that hat trick at the angle, takes a shot, but it's blocked and rebounds for Cook, who can run it away. And he's got Crawford to his right. But he doesn't want to go forward. He doesn't, instead, he goes back to I mean, Adjaman. Tried, not, tried his best not to go forward and just find a pass. Well, Crawford was, was the one making the, the run, wasn't he? But Cook ignored him. Out it goes to Ferguson. Desiree has strayed beyond the last defender and is offside. We've got two minutes of stoppage time left to play. Gateshead 7, Hartlepool United 1. On BBC Radio T Sport, as I say, Pool's next in action on Good Friday, hosting Halifax in the three o'clock kickoff. We'll have full match commentary of that one. And that is going to be a fascinating game now for all sorts of reasons after yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, it'd be, you know, first and foremost, what kind of reaction are they going to get? Will he stick with the back five? I mean, you play a back five to tighten up, don't you, and to stop goals and get more players in the central areas. And I mean, it's just been absolutely ripped a bit tonight. So now Gateshead in possession and just happy to have it. And you can see that the signal from the Gateshead bench is to just be I calm mean, and keep hold of it. But one twos marks. are opening up pools at will. Brown out to the left hand side. It could. Ed Francis inside the box, his shot goes through the legs of Parks and is gathered by Jameson, but again, just Gateshead want it more. And Ed, Honestly, Rob, any bit of movement, a little one-two, running in behind midfielders, not gotten anywhere near. They've just... They've been far too clever. They've had far too much movement. Pools have just stood off. I, I can't believe how far away. I mean, again, look... Well, look at the space here. It's Ben Warman out to the left-hand side. It goes now for Tom Allen once again. Just rolls his studs over the ball and pulls a bystanders here. Allen back in field looking for Greg Ollie, who looks to try and beat Jameson from the edge of the box, but Jameson saves comfortably. And referee Dale Baines puts us all out of our misery because Hartlepool United have been taken to school tonight by playoff hopefuls Gateshead. They took the lead on eight minutes through Joe Gray, but after that eight minutes, their game ran away from pools. 
An equaliser from the spot by Luke Hannon. And at half time, it was one all. But six goals in the second half. A double from Dejon Brown. A goal from Callum Whelan as well in there, who was brilliant this evening. But Pools, their biggest defeat of the season by far. The biggest under Kevin Phillips since he took over at the club. And with the team sat just five points above the relegation zone, it really, really does point to worrying times. With six games of the season left, a awful damaging defeat. And how Pools react now at Halifax could have a big bearing on the season as the Pools players go over to the far side to applaud the support of the travelling Poolies, which once again, it should be stressed, 1,314 Hartlepool United fans here tonight. And they saw a game which ends Gateshead 7, Hartlepool United 1. And Craig Hignett pick the bones out of that <laughs> I don't want to if I'm honest because it's I don't depressing. blame you yeah and you know you just after watching that you just hope that they can do enough to get themselves over the line not get embroiled into any last two games shenanigans you want them safe before the last three games ideally don't you so a couple of wins will, will do it I mean for those poolies over there who turned up tonight and and I've watched that, they must, I mean, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. I've been there, you know, I know what it's like. I know how embarrassing it is and you feel like you've let everyone down. And you have, you know, but it, like I say, it, it, no one goes out to play bad. But tonight, pools were just bad. They were just really bad. Even, I can give them five minutes in the first half after that gate had took over. And what happened in the second half was just... Well, I'd said to you at half-time, didn't I, about they needed to change it because if it was going the way it was going, there was only one winner. It was embarrassing in the end. And and that's hard to say because, you know, it's a derby match and you want it... You want a proper derby match and, and you want it to be close and blood and thunder and all that stuff. We've only seen that from one team tonight. And it's hard to say. You know, I... I, I was a Pooley fan tonight. I want Pools to win and I want them to score goals and I want them to go and and win games consecutively. But, you know, looking at that, I can't see where the next win's coming from. And that's hard to say. But, but I've, I mean, listen, that might be unfair because I've just judged them on that performance and I haven't seen them. Since Kevin's took over, I haven't seen them. Um, so that might be just a one-off and, and write it off. I hope it is. Because if that's the level that they're at, I know before I said they're not in trouble, but watching that, you can't help but think they might be. An embarrassing evening where Hartlepool United lose against their closest rivals with 1,314 travelling poolies watching on. Gates said 7, Hartlepool United 1. It's... Sorry, uh, I was like scratching my head a bit there. It's it's one of those where you look at the first half, we were talking about how Gateshead were the better side. It's a cliche, but clearly a game of two hearts is halves and they've been more clinical in that second half. Mm. But I mean that's that that is that's embarrassing, isn't it? It is, mate, but I'm not sure it was a game of two halves because I think Gateshead were in complete control from you know, after five minutes or so it all. When Poole scored after eight minutes, I think it was. They were uh, they were the better in possession. They were more controlled, more inventive, looked dangerous when they were going forward. Just had a way of playing and a structure about mm. them. Whereas if you if you judge that with how Poole's played, you know, long balls up to Manny Desiree seemed to be their only idea. They didn't really look like playing through or, or keeping the ball. They, they needed to be brave and keep the ball better. They didn't do that. They just lumped it. And Gates said more often than not won a second ball. In, in fact, probably won about 98% of the, the second balls and then just started attacks again. So it was back to the wall for pretty much the whole game. Hmm. And then, like you say, the, the only difference between the first half and the second half were they were clinical. 
really clinical. They made, you know, balls were falling to them in the box, taking a touch, lashing it in the box. Some lovely little lifts over the defenders who were stood like statues to let them run. Runners all night were a problem. But I think it was more than... It was a full team thing. You couldn't point the finger at one and say, well, they didn't defend very well or they didn't, they didn't do anything very well tonight. And that's hard to say because normally in games there's pickouts. And I'm thinking here, I'm just sat thinking here and, and, you know, if you're the manager trying to pick them up from that, the only thing I could get them out of jail and get them thinking differently would be to say, I'm going to forget about that because that's just a one-off. And that's a really dangerous thing to do because you can then breed performances like that a little bit more often. But if you're doing it to get to the end of the season, to then release 10 or 11 of them, then you have to do it. And that's, that's the only way for me to erase what's happened tonight, is to say to them, listen, it wasn't great. We all know it wasn't great. We need to do better next game. But I'm classing that as a one-off. Hmm. And then that way it gives them a little bit of a little bit of a carrot to go and say, well, no, I'm not that bad. Or the other way is you just go and hammer them and lose and, them and lose a few of them and, and see what the characters are like and, but, and, and learn about characters. The thing is as well, Craig, um, we spoke beforehand about the experience in the defence, um, the experience in the team. There's the players that came in, as in Tom Parks and Luke Waterfall, are renowned as, as leaders. Mm. Surely in a time like that, in that second half, you need leaders in the team to just get a hold of things and, and stop it from becoming such a drubbing. It's easy saying it, Matty, though, isn't it? So how do you get hold of it? Mm. If you haven't got the ball, how are you going to get hold of it? So what are you going to do? Are you going to change the way that, that is the manager told you to play a certain way and to defend a certain way and maybe drop off and let them have it up until the halfway line? Because that seemed to me to be a bit of a plan at times other times it wasn't so it was a bit of a mishmash for me all night I couldn't really see a pattern that Hartlepool were playing 